the momentum and the home ground advantage, you have to think. So we'll see whether they can use that moving forward. Callista going to be banned away once again. LeBlanc taken off the board as Gragas and Rek'Sai are going to be the answers by the Bangkok Titans. A lot of jungle focus, making sure Theocles can't get anything down. Maokai, though, the first time we've seen him banned away, and Thaldrin can pick the hi the Heimer? Hecarim. The Hecarim, if he wants to. <laughs> the Heimerdinger. The dreaded Heimerdinger. Oh, no. Person. Heimerdinger was left up, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's not going to be Heimerdinger. It's going to be the Hecarim, of course. Locked in first up. The first time we're going to see it not banned today. Yeah, so Smite teleport Hecarim in the top lane. That is an anti-carry if you've ever seen one. All of a sudden, Whoa. Lloyd and G4 need to be careful. This is not something new. Very common in the Sia region in general is blind pick Zed coming through. They put a lot of emphasis on that and will be taken into the mid lane. If they go with something like Urgot, that's all of a sudden a little bit harder to dive on top of. Yeah. 007X thinking about a jungle choice. Elise is currently the hover. We'll see whether that actually does come through. I do like the pickup, but is going to go with the Nunu in the end. Yeah, so I like Nunu. A little bit more impactful in the late games. Also, we saw that Theocles played that quite well this time around. Yeah. Did get dictated to early game, but late game bought it back and was very impactful for his team. So I think that getting that away from him, Udyr had a strong early game, but then kind of fell away, as Udyrs tend to do if you don't continue the snowball going. Yeah. So just get on something that's always going to be relevant. Helps out Warlock. Uh, sorry, helps out G4 with Zed, will help out Lloyd with whatever carries he's on, unless it isn't Ergot, in which case it doesn't. So yeah, it definitely will be, I guess, more impactful. Yeah, and we'll see what does get picked away. Of course, I don't know whether it will be the Zyra. We haven't seen too much Zyra just recently, ladies and gentlemen, but I would certainly love to see it in the mid lane, but Theocles is hovering it. Not going to be the case. It's going to be Sejuani. So we're going to have a horse and a pig roaming around this map. And that is a huge front line already locked away here by Besiktas. And it's a really good Wombo with an element of peel as well. You can use the Sejuani ultimate to continue to kite back. Very hard to run through there. So you can see exactly what's going to be happening. A little bit dangerous for Theocles. 007X will be able to invade him quite easily on the map. But you can see already if they're ever caught out of position... The Shikdash going to be really able to punish them. Yeah, they most certainly are. They also haven't given away too much here, of course. They're the top lane of Hecker are more than happy to go into a lot of different things, and they still have Nadius and Energy to fill out and a lot of different options there. But Lloyd, he's going to take away the Lucian. That was where Nadius was looking very, very comfortable. And Nautilus as well there for Moss. He looked fantastic on that champion. And man, if there's a matchup that I like for Diana, it's into Zed. Yeah, it certainly is. Diana outright beats Zed. Has a really good auto attack to yeah. go in there. Builds very naturally into Zonya's Hourglass. Actually wants it in most builds anyway. Yeah. And you know, Lloyd, I understand why he's picked up the Lucian. Nadia's played it very well. But if there's any uh, composition that wants more engaged, it's going to be a Hecarim Sejuani comp. And all of a sudden, they've got the big... <laughs> The donkey, donkey whistle. whistle. The donkey the whistle. The donkey whistle. To yep. get them in there. And if they wanted more speed ups, that is going to be energy listening to you, Spawn, picking up that Lulu for the mid lane. Yeah, so energy going to grab that one, and all of a sudden, you make everyone on the team tanky. You've got the double shield still. Yeah. A little bit more ca carry potential comes out of uh, Nadius, but. Really, it's all about chuck everything on uh, Thaldra in this game. He's going to be able to run over Lloyd every part of the game. And, you know, it's fantastic having 007X there on Nunu. But if you blood boil someone that dies instantly, they're still dead. Yeah, they are most definitely dead. But Scion, not so much. Because he dies and then he comes back again. Starts punching you in the face. And that is going to be Warlock's lock in there for the top side of the map. Going for... A little bit of scaling to match that of Hecarim, but you'll never really get to the likes of the horse in the late game. No, you don't. You know, Scion's not about doing the same job as Hecarim. He's about the consistent CC that he puts out, the ability to frustrate. He has a very, I guess, good ultimate if you are yep. able to nail the back line with it. Sometimes you get caught on the front line. So Hecar uh, Hecarim going to be looking for the big flanks. Scion more in the middle. He's a disruptor as opposed to an anti-carry like yeah. Hecarim.
And Hecarim is going to be building that Cinder Hulk with the Skirmisher's Saber as well there. The challenging smite to come through, and Lloyd is going to have to be very, very careful. Not sure whether the Bangkok Titans, despite having a fair bit of disengage and peel, I don't know whether they've got enough. Yeah, I definitely don't think that you can peel off Hecarim at this point in the game. No. He's just way too sticky. Grabs Merc, treads 9 out of 10 times, although this game he might even be able to go Ninja Tabby and get away with it because, once again, only Zed... Uh, Lucian, are the threats here on the side of uh, Bangkok Titans? They're running another two-threat lineup. Don't get me wrong. Much more augmentation coming through here. But I would have much preferred to see them commit to a Lulu before they did to the Scion because they didn't need to pick Nautilus. So support had already been locked in on the side of Besiktas. Yeah. And they committed to that. And now, all of a sudden, they've got a huge tank, yes. But if one of their carries dies again, they have no damage. Yeah, and also, Hecarim can feel free to build Randuin's Thornmail, any armor items he want, a Frozen Heart as well, and he'll be actually unable to be killed because, of course, they have no magic damage apart from Scion. Yeah, exactly right. So zero <laughs> magic damage coming through for the comp through from Bangkok Titans. Once again, Besiktas look like they have a better late-game composition. This time, I'm willing to even give the mid-game kinder to them as well because they can start team fights much easier on their side. But we'll have to see where the Bangkok Titans can pull it back. Yeah, well, Besiktas, as we hop onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen, look fantastic moving forward. Champion Select going great for them, but the Bangkok Titans have surprised us in the past. Nadius going to find Lloyd here in the river as we are, of course, onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen. Nice piercing light over a couple of members. Lloyd continuing to go aggressive. Is Eye of the Storm going to keep Nadius a little bit more happy. And G4 is going to find Theocles as well. Not going to find too much damage on him, though. Yeah, they just want to know where Nunu is starting his jungle so they can allow Theocles to get his level 3 a little bit easier. 007X on Nunu. We'll be able to invade the Sejuani pretty much at will. Stays so much more healthy in the oh, jungle. Yeah. And we'll see whether he actually gets in and disrupts Sejuani's early clear. Because if he gets towards that bottom side, towards that red buff, he might be able to get something going because, of course, she falls super low. Yeah, exactly right. Something we should point out, guys, is the fact that Hecarim has gone for Teleport Smite. Not oh, uh, wow. Teleport Ignite, not Teleport Smite. Something that Thaldrin did, I believe, when he picked up the Hecarim the first time around. Likes to go for the Trinity Force outright. Doesn't go for the Skirmishing Saber. Of course, not available to be built unless you have... The smite, so... He was hovering the teleport smite, though, before, so he did consider it, and I wonder why he went back to the ignite. Yeah, I definitely would be interested to see exactly what makes it a more attractive option. I agree with you, because it seems to be kind of a no-brainer in this meta. However, we've seen him use it to fantastic effect. He yeah. was one of the seven. He wasn't the one. <laughs> he was, most definitely. And look, see how he does go. He has cleared out... Does Warlock Raptors. go to a second camp now? I'll be really interested to see whether they... Ah, so he doesn't. But the one thing you can do is if you start using potions on Scion, if you want to die, just don't do it. In fact, if you're going to do a camp, you shouldn't do it because when you die, you actually clear out one camp quicker. But something you can do is you can use your flask potions yeah. on the Raptor camp, then go to wolves and die. And you take the wolves as well. So you actually get two camps really quickly. You die, you teleport back top. Hopefully it hasn't hit your turret yet as 007X is going to be able to take away that. Yep, easily done. Just blood boils after Theocles. Love taps him on the way out and says thank you very much for starting off that Rift Scuttler. Yeah, but now he knows that he's extremely low and he doesn't have a red buff. So he, I'm actually surprised he invaded this side of the jungle and didn't just beeline for the red buff. Yeah, Theocles is actually going to take 007X on a merry Ooh. ride. But Lulu coming in as well. Looking for the collapse. As well as Hecarim. They're committing a lot to this. Yeah, Glitterland's coming down on top of 007X here as Energy's trying to chase through. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana, but in comes Thaldren. Devastating charge to come through. G4 tries to slow him down with that shadowed up uh, E, I believe. So he's going to be able to at least stop the onslaught there, and Warlock gets some free time in the top lane. So 007X takes them on a ride. But 007X used so many summoner spells there. He used the flash and the ignite for only his flash, so he gets everything out of the mid laner energy. He's now an actual reasonably easy gank. 
not too bad. Maybe the mind games are going to pay off here. Energy completely out of mana as well as G4 looking to go aggressive. Follows the Living Shadow in as well. Able to get the harass down. Goes down to about half health, but still has some potions. And Hecarim falling low here in the top lane as well. Warlock. My goodness, putting on the pressure here. Yeah, there are so many consumables in this top lane, though. Good luck to either of them killing each other. So, this is the wet noodle fight of old in this top side. Actually bursts the uh, shield. That's very important in trading with Scion. If you are able to burst his shield, you can actually win majority of the ga uh, trades early game because you can just dance out of his... Uh, the devastating smash, That's which is the, the majority of his damage this, at this part of the game. But energy continuing to fall low here in the mid, mid lane. Damage down from G G4. As, look, his Zed did look fantastic in the previous game. I'm just really worried about the Bangkok Titans getting towards any semblance of a late game because they just don't have enough mixed damage. Yeah, I think that you really shouldn't be worried about them getting to the late game because if they get there, I actually think that unless they're like... I, I'm going to say 7,000 gold is a sweet spot. If they are 7,000 gold in the lead, I think they're ahead by about the 30-minute mark. Anything under that... Uh, they're in a lot of trouble to be outscaled again. Yeah, well, Lloyd actually getting pressured very, very hard in this bottom side. Nadius able to use that spell shield to great effect, and he's really having his way with the Bangkok Titans they so far. They tried to in the shove out side. mid, but didn't do it quick enough. So Theocli is going to have to come in again for support. Actually, isn't that bad because Sejuani was falling a little bit behind as we have a fight in the top lane. Yeah, Thaldrin actually forcing the flash out of Warlock here. Who turns around, I'm not sure why. Well, because he still has two potions and a mana pot. So the fact that he was that low in the lane and wasn't chugging a pot before the fight start is a little bit confusing because he should have been able to stay incredibly healthy in that lane by just continually using consumables, shoving the lane out. Yeah, Roar of the Slayer, not going to find Thaldrin there as Warlock. Does want to use this decimating smash Green to clear Green members the coming towards the top side of the map for Bangkok Titans. Must be pinged out. Thaldrin, you're in a lot of trouble if you stick around. Oh, that Roar of the Slayer had to land if they wanted to find anything. G4 is going to head back to base here. Knows that he's probably been spotted. Yeah, there is a ward there. So Thaldrin, he's just going to go back as well. Max the back time, a big wave on... Oh, they're still going for it. G4. G4. He's going to go for something. Uh, 007X is going to be able to clear out this Triple mid Triple D ring coming through from Energy. Wow. And was it Energy that did this previously? We saw another mid laner pick up the Triple Doran's ring. And I have a feeling it may have been Energy, but I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, potentially. That's a very heavy investment to a laning phase. Maybe because he wants to go for a very quick Zonya's Hourglass and needs the mana regen on Lulu. Potentially. So will help him out as they go for a fight in the bottom lane. Yeah, they don't find the Howling Gale, though. Energy looking to come through here. The Whimsy going to speed up as Double. there's the Glitter Lance. Arden plays over the top here as Bangkok Titans trying to turn this one around. Multiple members heading down towards the bottom side as the exhaust on Deloitte does run out. They get the heal at the same time. And that was all just with two members. Yes, but there were another two heading down the River Atlas. And all of a sudden, now Energy in a lot of trouble. Yeah, does still have the ultimate available, so still deceptively tanky. His Arctic Assault is actually dodged out of the way up with the Death Mark. G4 actually going down very, very low. Goes back, back to in. his ult Shadow, which was a bit ridiculous. Is now burning down. First Blood in the top lane in the meantime, as Warlock actually gets the kill back at the same time. Lloyd manages to get a lot of damage down with the Piercing Light as the Bangkok Titans trying to turn this one, but... Man, this is on a knife edge across the rift. Yeah, so everywhere members dropping. Top lane, they trade one for one. First Blood was picked up, I believe, by the Hecarim. Yep. But there's a 16 CS advantage up there for the Scion. That's crazy. Bottom lane, everyone went extremely low. No one died. Pretty much every summoner spell being used, apart from the flashes on the side of Besiktas. And you have to think they probably got the better of that one. Yeah, they did. Nadius able to clear out this pink uh, pink ward as well. As nice spell shield yet again. Nadius has really been nailing that. Moss now with no mana left. And Nadius and Dumbledore have been able to play this lane very, very nicely. Yeah, Nadius and Dumbledore have been fantastic all tournament long, Atlas. And they're just continuing it today. Even in the mid lane now, Lulu has gone back, picked up boots and an amp tome. Starting to build a little bit of a CS advantage. 
needs to be careful that she doesn't get her blue buff stolen away because without CDR in the build, Lulu does tend to struggle in certain matchups. Zed being one of them, just gets his ult available more often than yours. Yeah. And of course, wild growth is exactly what you want to be using to avoid dying to Zed. Most definitely. Theocle is actually waiting around here for a gank, sort of witnessing his blue buff being stolen. Energy and Theocles want to close in, of course. Glacial Prison is available. Energy taking a shuriken there as 007X wants to offer something. And Living Shadow is going to be returned to here by G4, but he goes down so incredibly low. There's the ult. He gets stunned up, but Warlock has come in here. There's the death mark. G4 is going to die as Dumbledore picks that one up. 007X actually gets Monsoon back. Oh, goodness knows where. Has Energy going to chase him down here as well? Thaldron finds his way into the fight. Oh my goodness, these Rampages Ultimate are doing available. work. 007X does fall down. Warlock is going to die though. His passive might actually do some work now, but he gets polymorphed up. Energy able to stop the Scion from doing anything, and Besiktas are rolling over this game. Yeah, Besiktas looking amazing in the early game coming into this one. Early rotation coming through. A second kill picked up by Thaldron. The champion you don't want to get rolling right now is the Hecarim. We've seen how dangerous he can be the entirety of it. And it was just an overcommit. 007X didn't have the vision needed to be able to steal that one away. Look at the line of wards that had come through from Besiktas and they were able to take another fight. Yeah, and G4, I was complimenting his Zed play in the last time that we saw it, but this time been returning to some very interesting shadows, making plays when he's not going to survive in any way. And hasn't really been working out as effectively as it did before. Yeah, exactly right. So that needs to improve if his team has any hope. He's one of the big carries they need to go off in the bottom lane. Lloyd, he's farming completely fine. He's even in CS, has picked up a couple of longswords, so we'll be going that Brutalizer Infinity Edge build. I actually like it, but not on this composition because he's one of two damage sources. He needs to be able to do big late game damage. He needs the Phantom Dancer. Or do they just completely sack the late game because they know that they're not going to be able to do anything? Or is that playing to sort of... Yeah, I guess you can in. just all in the mid game, but when you've already fallen behind, that's a huge risk. Well, look, the Bangkok Titans are going to need to do something to turn this one around. They're down about 1.4 thousand gold, so not too far. Shikdash are looking to get aggressive here on the bottom side. Helen Gale going to inadvertently take Moss into the sky. Theocles coming through here as well. 007X hanging around. Doesn't have boots, but of course that blood boil making the Nunu pretty fast. Versus boots too, already being picked up by Theocles. He's prioritizing some armor in there because of all the auto attackers on the Bangkok Titans lineup. And they're once again looking for another gank in this bottom lane. Yeah, trying course. to get Nardius ahead. He seems to be the primary carry that they love going to, and you can really see why. They've gone in again. Yeah, on the hunt's been popped. Dredge line going to be used by Moss to try and get him out of here. As Absolute Zero is available here for 007X. The Oculus going down very, very low. Beautiful depth charge to get rid of a lot of these members of the team. Nardius actually flashing forward there. Tries to pick up Moss, but doesn't Scion's take it. behind them, maybe? Yeah, Scion actually Cancels. cancels his... Teleport. Bad teleport usage by Warlock. Dragon is available. It's 12 and a half minutes in. Now all of a sudden they have five minutes on the bottom side of the map. They can just shove this lane in, go start that one up. Or better yet, they can just dive. Yeah, they're looking for something. Lloyd, very low on mana. Going to get the ward in here, but sees that there's a Thaldron. And this is a very scary horse. 007X is around here. Onslaught of Shadows Whoa. was used a little bit early, but man, this horse is doing so much damage and that's without a sheen i thought there must have been a sheen with that damage so they'll pick up the bottom lane turret they won't get anything else for it although they burn a summoner spell as well warlock might be able to return the favor in the top lane he has a wave up there and looking to take it down but once again advantage going to the uh, besiktas lineup right now turkey looking fantastic yeah they have definitely turned out what turned around whatever was going wrong to go three and three as very high on the favorites list coming into the group stage and must have definitely had oh an insult to injury that oh, turret lives man. on no health strategic it's calculated i believe by feldron as he re-enters this lane top turret now possibly an option here for the shik dash g4 just continues to clear this one out and zero one and zero as a zed does he really have to have 
got more by this stage, or does he now have an opportunity to do so? Level 9 is going to have maxed out those shurikens now, so that's going to be doing some burst damage. Yeah, the problem is he's going to be up against the uh, Hecarim in the split push if he ever does get to that situation. And I think Hecarim at the m this point just kills him if he ever walks into his lane. So I definitely think he needed to do a little bit more before this point in the game. Maybe try and get some CS up. Maybe even go into a side lane earlier because it's 15 minutes into the game. This has been a fairly long laning phase with not many turrets falling down. You have to think that suits Besiktas's late game. Most certainly. They don't have to force at all. If this game goes for a 20 minute laning phase, they're happy. Well, look, it's on the road for that. Thus far, 14 minutes and 40 seconds. First dragon being picked up. Yeah, Theocles trying to get in amongst that one. The ward goes down here for Moss. But they are going to just witness the demise of the dragon. So, so far, the standard lanes this game has led to a very, like, season 2S game of League of Legends. They've just been willing to rotate slowly around the map. They picked up bottom. Now a little bit more of a fast push coming through. They're trying to clear out the mid wave. See how that works out as... They were trying to get a sneaky raptor camp out as well. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a sneaky raptor camp. Theocles now with the ultimate available. They're looking to try and start something up. As oh, Lloyd takes a lot of damage from Energy, who shrugs it off with the three Doran ring. Yep, not too Makes worried. Makes him so tanky in the mid lane. Like, he's really hard to deal with. Well, he's also got the wild growth there as well, so deceptively tankier than he already is. Yeah. Which is That's just ridiculous. Three members actually up in this top lane. Theocles needs to be careful. 007X and Moss coming through there. He would have known there was one, but not two. And now he's in a bit of trouble. Yeah, gets stunned up there as well. Oh, Thaldron is coming around. Energy there as well. Does have the wild growth for the piggy. If they're in trouble. So Zed's gone into the bottom lane now. He's against Nardius. Nardius needs to be on point with that spell shield if he has any hope of uh, equaling out this one. But also has his support. Dumbledore's never too far from his... AD carry player, and now top lane under real fire. Moss trying to tank it up. Yeah, looking to try and hold it here for 007X. Which is interesting. Probably just wants to make sure that it doesn't take too much unnecessary damage. There's the death mark. Is going to get spell shielded, though, as G4 taking a lot of damage from Nardius. Uses the heal maybe a little bit early as G4 flashes over the boomerang and picks up the 1v1 kill. Yeah, so really nice play there from G4 to able to take that one. Nadia's probably needed to heal a little bit earlier, but all three Shurukens hit, I believe, there. So good Zed play, oh, even yeah. after the death mark was blocked out by that spell shield. Yeah, nicely played by G4. Able to win at least that split push there. As Zoldrin heading up towards his top side does have the Sheen now. He's fighting Warlock, but Warlock with the Frozen Heart. It's a pretty tough ass to take down. Yeah, it certainly is. They're going to continue to consistently fight through this one. It will go eventually in Warlock's favor. Oh. Yeah, Dumbledore just coming around here, though. Does have Eye of the Storm to give to Thaldrin here as 007X is taking down the Raptors. Moss heading back towards this top side. Knows that there's a few too many members here for Warlock to deal with on his own as he's just going to tank up these minion waves over and over again. But this is the best thing about Hecker, right? You get your home guards early on in the game, you lose a trade, doesn't matter. You go back to base, you hit your E, and you gallop back up into your lane. Damn right you do. Through the meadow. As Lloyd... He's going to clear out this mid wave once more. Energy's in the bottom side of the map. We take a good look at Hecarim. Just realized he's not wearing a saddle. It's a little bit sad. Hecarims have been carrying games throughout this patch. And look at Probably that. He didn't lose any CS. Not bad at all. He even has a dagger for the next trade. Not bad. Nadius able to get some damage down onto this turret. Might be able to take this one out, actually, for the last outer turret of the game. Oh, no, actually, second last. As the top is also still available. Not on too much health, though, as Warlock does have a CS advantage in that top side. So Sion definitely doing well. But Thaldrin on 2-1-1, one, one, a very frightening prospect. And we'll have the Trinity Force before we're used to, if you'd say that we're used to seeing Smite teleport Hecarim a little bit more. Yeah, definitely, and they've moved into the top lane. A little bit of a premature rotation coming through because this will allow Bangkok Titans to take down the mid, uh, mid lane turret. They might even be able to continue to push, although now Dumbledoge and Nardius have teamed up there, and they take down the top lane turret in response. So three turrets to one now in favor of Besiktas. They've got a 3,000 gold lead. 
probably earlier than we expected in this game. We said Bangkok Titans really needed to be up to make this one work, and it's a lot of pressure now. Big items coming through. There is a Zonya's Hourglass finished off. There's an Infinity Edge, the Trinity Force that we spoke of at My 19 goodness. minutes in with Boots 2. Everyone on this Besiktas lineup has hit a power spike of some kind. Even Dumbledore now has his Magi's. At the perfect timing as well, Atlas. A minute 30 till Dragon. They're going to be able to ward up that area, make sure they have complete control of it, take another one, remove that win condition from Bangkok Titans because you feel if they get the second one, Five minutes after 26 minutes, uh, sorry, 36 minutes after 26, like what, 52 minutes? There's no way this game is going 60 minutes long. You just said so many numbers and I have no idea what you just meant. So, all right, if they get the next dragon, yep. Bangkok Titans need five to get the five dragons. Yep. Respawns every six minutes. Yep, six times five. So, that, well, yeah. So 30 minutes 30. on top of that, so 50 minutes. Nailed it. All right, good. Makes sense to me now. Sorry, it was just a whole lot of numbers once in a row. Look, we've been at this for quite some time. My brain is turning to mush. Yeah, I thought we had something. Didn't even think I had to say any words. Apparently, I was wrong. Oh, what? Of course we have something, Spawn. Don't worry. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Warlock and Thaldron still battling one another here on the top side. Still not going anywhere. Thaldron's just running around in circles. He's trying to cleave down these waves. All he's doing. Trying to get a machine proc in there every now and again. It's boring to watch. Let's just get out of that top lane. Nothing's going to happen. Bishik Dash are going to clear out some vision around this dragon, which is going to be up in another 10 seconds. 007X getting slowed down just a little bit, but Bishik Dash unable to really commit to it. They take down the Rift Scuttler, though. And we'll see whether they do manage to clear out the rest of the All vision. Right, so Soldiers the important heading back thing to around this bra dragon fight, try and spot the blue ward that the Hecarim is going to go to, because he's in base. There is no doubt that Bangkok want to contest this one. They get a ward in there, they're not able to. It's going to fall down. Yeah, and they just give up as well. They know that the Hecarim was elsewhere on this map and could have come through with that teleport. So, look, they just let it go. Yeah, so they don't contest whatsoever. All of a sudden, there's another win condition coming through for Bang uh, Besiktas there. Really in control of this game is Dumbledore soloing out. Oh Lloyd. my goodness! The Ocalys looks for the ultimate, doesn't find it there as it was almost invisible, difficult to see. Did he throw out the ult? He did. Yeah, yeah missed Lloyd. Flashed it, Lloyd. Not Finger too bad. On the trigger at all times. Able to get out of there. Not too we bad. have energy being zoned a little bit by G4 in this bottom lane. Still don't think there's much kill potential coming through from Zed. Yeah, he does have the Last Whisper Brutalizer and the Build Water Cutlass, so has hit a relative spike in power. Lulu probably needs some CDR now. Needs to get into either an Athens or a Morella Nomicon relatively soon. And probably needs some mana regen as well. There's only so many Glitter Lancers that you can throw out there. The Ocalys in this bottom side doesn't have the ultimate available as Thaldron. He's going to just hand over the enemy red buff to Nadius. Now they're collapsing on top lane. That is a hard target to be able to take out. Warlock probably not scared at this point. Although they have caught out Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd running through here. The boomerang comes down. Nadius able to pick up that kill very easily. And now they might be able to transition to this top inner turret. Mashikdash just playing this game out really beautifully. Yeah, and Lloyd is all of their wave clear in there. They can, I guess, use Warlock, <laughs> although he just yelled at one of them. Uh, Get out of the brush. I love Scion. He's just so funny. Speaking of funny, double said no, 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 having no. a bit of a giggle there. So they're not able to push in here. Scion wave clear too strong at this point in the game. So that was just abandoned ship. Double seven next donating some mana over to Nardius as he throws that ice blast. Thaldron with a null magic mantle now. So ultimate Which, turn what? from both G4. What? Hmm? Why does Thaldron have a Null Magic Mantle? Why not? Dumbledore is going to be falling down very low here as well. As 007X looking to try and chase his nun down. The flash immediately over the top as the exhaust comes through onto the Nunu, but <laughs> just blows the ultimate and takes down the support player. Warlock chasing down Thaldron. They're not going to really find too much as the horse is able to run around. The reason I'm confused about the uh, Null Magic Mantle is the fact that there is zero magic damage to worry about, really. I guess if he's going to be 1v1ing Warlock, then yeah. But, I mean, that helps him for now, maybe. I just feel like he should be getting a Frozen Heart straight away. 
Yeah, potentially, you know, Frozen Heart, very strong item, has a cooldown reduction, although Spirit Visage, also very good, and he's listened to you, he picked up two. No, oh, yeah, there you go. So just sitting on the Null Magic Mantle, already has the boots too, the Ninja Tabby to help him against those ADs, Atlas, so just felt that need to itemize a little bit more towards the lane. Yeah, I just feel like he just doesn't need a Magic Resist item at all. No, Spirit Visage, way too good. Do you just have to have that item Yeah, regardless? that is, like, core. I was aware of that, but I thought it may have something to do with needing to deal with magic damage. Sometimes, but you know, he also gets this huge heal every six seconds late game that it synergizes really well with. Yeah, that's a good point. That is a very good point. Miranda and Zoman completed by Warlock now. He has a lot of armor on his side as well. No magic resist to speak of, as energy might be able to get some damage through, and Theocles does a whole lot of magic damage at the same time, but Warlock able to tank up these AD carries pretty easily in Thaldron. Being one of those, not going to be doing too much. As Nadius, able to use that scrying orb, knows that he's going to be safe taking down this pink ward. That's going to be no worries at all. Yeah, so a very big lull in the middle of this game. Still 3,000 gold, the lead for Besiktas. Not really much action has happened since last dragon fight, where the only action that we had was an NPC falling down. So, yeah. But look, it was pretty exciting still. Relance pursued from Lloyd, going to get him out of the way of that boomerang. And they continue to clear out these waves. G4 clears out the bottom side of the Blade map. Warlock staying finished in the top. up for G4, so he's Big in a better position than where he was. 204 CS is a very big split-pushing threat. Right now, can definitely deal with Doldrum 1v1, so maybe they try and get him into the Hecarim lane with some real kill threat. As we have Dumbledore fighting Moss again. They've yeah. been caught out. Yeah, energy actually getting caught here by Moss as well as 007X is going to get monsooned out of the ultimate. My god, Thaldrin just destroys Lloyd. Warlock now getting chunked down a little bit as well. Energy able to do some damage here to this Sion who's running around looking for something to do. Theocles right in amongst this fight. 007X gets cut in half as Nadius with a whole lot of consistent damage able to get the work done. G4 has been zoned out of the fight and Besiktas, they're just going to go for a Baron. Yeah, they can do Baron. They've got a very tanky Theocles willing to do that one. And they've got so much damage at this point in the game, not to mention the shields. They're right in there, going to be able to chunk this one down. Yeah, Warlock now trying to be a menace here on the backside. Nadius able to spell shield the Decimating Smash. That is huge. The Scion's going to fall down. May just get polymorphed here as G4. He wants a shot at it. Theocles able to actually use that... Arctic Assault to get over the top here. Thaldron might. He's going to die. Yeah, so able to get the kill there, G4, but the Baron will still probably fall. Oh my goodness. The bear falls down. Nadius locks up the Baron. That was one auto attack off killing him. Yeah, it certainly was. So a little bit sloppy coming through for the Turkish lineup, but they're able to secure Baron and the 6,000 gold lead. <laughs> And the Bangkok Titans come around going, yeah, okay, they've backed off the Baron, let's take it. No, it fell down. <laughs> uh, but they might be able to get their first dragon. That is definitely a big deal. Yeah, they certainly will be able to ro rotate in for that one. But one team fight Baron for just the dragon coming through there, definitely in favor of Besiktas. And all of a sudden, that Hecarim that just deleted the Lucian has his frozen heart that you were talking about. Yeah. And he's huge. That's probably the biggest item he could have picked up at this point in the game. Means that he tanks up G4 a little bit more effectively as well. Able to use that movement speed to get around G4. He was able to pick up the parting kill there, but did have to use the ignite for it. And we'll see exactly what Besiktas want to do now because they have the Baron buff. They're able to push out these waves very easily. And you see, top lane seems to be the target. Yeah, and that was that's a Hecarim going from zero added um, cooldown reduction to 20%. That's a crazy boost. Nadius getting so much damage down onto this turret as these buffed up minions going to get tanked and by And the minion Warlock. wave is prepped in mid. They were letting it hold up on one of the creep waves. Another should be able to get there just in time. You see Thaldrin holding it. Yeah, holding it off to the side there as Nadius with the Baron buff. They only have a couple of members here with that one. Of course, the Ocalys and Thaldrin were dead. The Bangkok Titans looking to fight for this one as 007X may be going a little bit too aggressive. Falls to about half health. Thaldron as well going to get decimatingly smashed as the Howling Gale comes across. Moss going to get glitter lanced as well. As Thaldron oh. just jumps on the turret. Look at the damage from the Trinity Force. Devastating charge. Man, 
Hecarim does some silly things at this stage of the game with these items. So already they take down two turrets. They ping out bottom lane. There's a huge wave down there, so that will take a little bit longer to prep. But that looks to be the next objective coming through. Although now they just rotated back mid. Oh, wow. You need to be so careful, Nadius. You've got a G4 on your tail in the bottom wave. He's gone in. Yeah, he's looking for it. There's on the hunt, Popters. The death mark does fall down here. Nice exhaust, and the bait may have come through. Nadius picks up G4. Thank goodness for Dumbledore. Yeah, but really good use of the brush. Went back into the brush afterwards. Was unable to spell shield at this time. Very close but made sure that he made the right decision to run towards his support player. Didn't panic at all. They're able to pick up another kill. This will be another turret secured. Yeah, Baron still active on these members of Besiktas, and they're going to take down the inner turret. Six turrets to two now. 10,000 gold Energy. will be the lead. Energy did wild growth himself and is taking damage from Lloyd here as well. Wow. Oh my goodness, the three-man glacial prison. Moss is getting torn apart. Nice exhaust on Anadius. Not going to be enough as Warlock He's going to fall down. Lloyd getting auto attacks across. If that was a crit, he'd be dead. But it wasn't this time around. Lloyd paying for that incredible luck that he had before. 007X gets boomeranged here. Howling Gale to come across as well. We didn't really touch on the fact that this is Nadius with three items. That is massive coming through for this Sivir. And they're going to take down turret after turret. But Shiktas just look incredibly strong. 11,000 gold in the lead. Yeah, there's one last hit on it. Nadius wanted to go for it. Too risky, so they do back away, but the damage has been done, Atlas. 11,000 gold, the lead. And I believe I said that it, if 30 minutes, uh, Bangkok Titans were 7,000 gold up, I would call it an even game. So that's more like an 18,000 gold lead at this point because they just are so much better in a 5v5 situation. Yeah, and so we could probably say that uh, Bashik Dash are in the lead. Nailed it. And they're looking fantastic moving forward into this one. Theocles even decided he'd build a Banner of Command. Yeah, so he's able to pick up that item. It's a pretty standard Sejuani choice, <laughs> well, I have to say. You pointed out the lack of magic damage. Just wanted the team fighting stats to come through, and you don't really need the upgrade into the locket. So Banner of Command, very reasonable for uh, pushing side waves. Good choice. Yeah, I guess. Hey, we've we've seen crazier things. We've seen mid Banner of Command Scions. Yeah, that's legit. Ridiculous. Oh, wow, Bristle is motoring up the mid lane. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to do away with saying Sejuani just because most of the champion is, in fact, Bristle. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Has a clarity of the viewership atlas. Yeah, it's beautiful. But. Crystal is off to the side that you can see. This turret just needs to be ran at and taken down. It is going to be Nadius that he's going to finish that one off. The inhibitor now exposed as Bashikdash looking for an engagement. Look at, Look at all shield. the shields. That's insane. The boomerang coming over the, cro over the top of the Bangkok Titans as well. They're looking to try and find their way in. Theocles takes a third of his life from G4, who's getting a decent amount of harass down. Thaldra just going to launch himself at him. That's some burst damage. Warlock doesn't find the decimating smashes. There's the depth charge, just gets spell shielded, and now the Bangkok Titans might need to be careful. Theocles whiffs the ult, though. Zoning Sejuani ultimate yep. again. The zoning ult, no problem there at all. Energy doing a decent amount of damage back onto Warlock here, but shield not going to be broken just yet, and he just wants to kill minions. Lloyd in the top side, so but they've broken the base. Yeah, another one team fight coming through for Besiktas. They're able to break in. They get the first inhibitor of the game. And all their champions still continuing to sail. You see another BF sword on Nadius. And I love what he's done. Not having a Vamp Scepter on his build. Doesn't worry about it. Picks up the Elixir of Wrath. Uses yep. that to get himself, wow. Oh, dodging out of a bit of the damage here as the death mark comes through. Oh, the fear dodged out of the way of by G4, but it doesn't matter. Theocles just going to pick up that kill somehow. How did Theocles get that? Because of the banner of command. Oh, Minion. nice. Not too bad at all. Actually, the ultimate going to get stopped here. Thaldrin is just so tanky in this fight. Nadius oh, able to do some work. Double dose with a monsoon of destiny. Lloyd gets exhausted up here as well, but Moss Picks up Thaldren. They might be able to get something done now, but Energy, he's come through the backside. Warlock, very, very low. Does use the Zonyas as Theocles picks himself up another kill as he's finally made his way into this fight. My god, the kill's going down left, right, and center for Bashikdash. 
as they're now going to rotate into taking down these starts. Energy, he wants to pick up some Nexus starts off this one. And how did that ace even happen? Yeah, so they're able to get the pick on G4 and then win the team fight afterwards. Game two going to go across to the <laughs> shit chases. <laughs> the ugly throws another ult to the left. Yep, just demonstrating the majority of the ults that he's thrown out this game. But it hasn't mattered, been playing fantastically. Besiktas make it 2-0 and zero against who we thought were the clear favourites moving into this one. And man, the Turkish team really came to play today. Yeah, exactly right. Able to get in, the reverse sweep yeah. needs to come through. And they did it with a pretty similar composition, a little bit different this time around. They had I guess it's the focus that's similar. They have the focus of getting yeah. Nardius ahead, continue to focus on their bottom lane, build an early, uh, a good lead in that lane, and then transition that into the team fights. Nardius looks like a fantastic team fighting AD carry, and yeah. he's coming up against Lloyd, who's had some flashy plays, but seems to can't go the distance in these team fights. Yeah, he's just not really holding himself together. He looks like he is one of these sort of skirmishing. Uh, AD carry players who really just want to fight each other in lane. They do look brilliant in lane, Moss and Lloyd. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah, the team fights just haven't been the same. And Besiktas have built these team fighting comps, and it's exactly what they need to be doing. They need to be focusing around these team fights and just weather the storm of the lane. Yeah, phase. and the other thing is, is that Thaldrin's doing his job much better than Warlock. He was. Yeah. On the first game, he had the huge Maokai game, was unkillable. This game, he was just deleting Lloyd every time he was near a team fight. He was doing ridiculous amounts of yeah. damage on that Hecarim. So maybe it's more about the emphasis that they're putting on the top lane and making sure that that's a neutral lane. Just in sh uh, get both players to the equal part and then trusting that the Besiktas top laner is going to do more. Well, it has been the way of it so far. And of course, Energy as well, he's looked great. G4's Zed was terrifying in the previous Zed performance that he had, but Energy dealt with it. I mean, Zed did get to some decent items, but by that stage, Hecarim was too big. Yeah, Energy's kind of a utility mid laner, and I think that there's definitely no shame in the way that he plays because he does play a more supporting role. Yeah. He had some standout games. The one versus the Chiefs where he was on Ari was absolutely massive, but... Yeah, this game, he was much more of a utility player. First game, he was on Oriana. Once again, a role player coming through. But the build-up Nardius composition definitely is working. So I think that they just stick with it. Yeah, most definitely. But ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go to a short break. When we get back, we'll see whether Besiktas can make it through for a 3-0 or whether we're going to have the attempted reverse sweep for the Bangkok Titans. Guys, don't go anywhere.